Uh, that what he telling me, man. He telling me to um, she telling me to um, go to lunch. To, to, to go to Where are you going? Right? Where are you going? Alright, so while this is really You talk If you took AP, um, if you were nice, that would probably be right where I have it. Alright. It's done for the Hey. cool difficulties. It happens sometimes. Oh, this is a I'll cut to when we're on here. Be right back. So, here's what the author is sort of encountering. Now he is a he Wilfred Owen was a veteran of World War One, and so he, as many of his era were, he was involved in the war, he fought in the war. And as a citizen, though, even though the war is going on, citizens are experiencing it whether they want to or not. And so they're seeing it through a variety of posters, many of which just prey on the idea of, I don't know, not guilt, right? Who's absent? You. Uh, let's see. Women to work in the factories, so there's a plea for women. Every England expects every man to do his duty. So it's it's not a matter of like choice, except you can choose to feel guilty for the rest of your life about it. Uh, the idea of rallying together will appear if you feel enlist, guilty you about not getting shot. Anymore. We said, really, this one's really interesting. Dad, Daddy, what did you do in the Great War? So the idea that, like, in a few years, you're going to have to tell your kids that you wussed out. That's, so there's, like, this sort of guilting. Well, not wussed out, making a smart decision. Or painting the enemy as, so this is... Adorable. So the enemy, the Axis powers are painted with this image all the time. It's got the same image, destroy him, he's destroying us. So this, this is the United States poster. Of course. Uh, there are other issues like uh, loose lips sink ships or some of that stuff going on at the same time. Tittle tattle lost the battle. So like if you run your mouth about what's happening. Yeah, uh, Hitler. So there's all kinds of propaganda going on. Um, the primary message, though, is this idea that your country needs you and that there's glory, it's glorious for you to fight in battle. And it's actually, the Collect other this. side of that point is it would be shameful of you to neglect to do your duty. And so the biggest heroes here are those who go to battle and sacrifice for their country, that it is glorious to do that. We have that dynamic. You may believe that to be true, you may believe that to be untrue, but that's even still sort of the primary recruiting mechanism is either have an adventure, like go see the world, or like you're patriotic and glorious if you go to the war and fight for your country. Again, that may be true, it may not be true. But the primary technique for recruiting young men to fight and others to join the war effort was this idea of glory and sacrifice for the country and the glory. So the poem you're going to read now 
takes that context and applies it to someone who actually experiences battle, experiences death, sees it, delivers a descriptive poem about death, and then concludes it with this very poignant, direct statement about war and glory. And so, you, I want you to read that poem out loud in two or threes. Okay, so read it aloud. The sound imagery is really important. I want you, when you read it through, to look for that thematic statement. And then we'll go back and touch on the imagery, the other figurative language, and we'll make sure you understand that context entirely. If you don't know Latin, there are two ways to go about reading that last statement. You could use the Googler and find out what it means. But I bet you could figure it out from the context. Basically, you could ballpark that. Okay? So what part of this he wants to, um, like which one of these um, the po in the point of analysis do you want us to mention? What does it mean? Well, the whole poem has built to that. Oh. Uh. Okay. All right, so we'll touch base in 10 minutes to talk about the, the other issues as well. Okay? That's nice. Uh, Oh, yes. <laughs>